Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Lopez, and as a mathematics instructor here at St. Philip's College, I will be your host for this event. I would like to welcome everyone to the 25th STEM lecture series, Women Engineers, Providing Healing, Promoting Hope. The STEM lecture series was created to connect students, faculty, and the community with STEM professionals. The intent of events in this series is to increase interest and inspiration in the STEM fields. STEM represents science, technology, engineering, and the mathematics disciplines. In observance of Women's History Month, we have three women here today who will discuss their STEM journeys both academically and professionally. Before we begin the discussion, please allow me a moment to introduce our three panelists. In alphabetical order, first we have Stephanie Cotier. Currently, Stephanie teaches engineering and mathematics courses at St. Philip's College, also known as SBC, and is the SPC Interim Engineering Coordinator from 2020 to 2021. Stephanie completed her master's degree in mechanical engineering at the University of Texas at San Antonio in 2019, where her research focused on hypersonics and the analysis of shockwave boundary layer interactions. Her research won her first place in the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics International Student Competition held during the 2020 Science Tech or SciTech Forum. Welcome engineer Stephanie Cartier. Hi. Next, we have Hala Jaber. Hala Jaber is currently an instructor in the engineering and mathematics department at SBC and a PhD student in electrical engineering program at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Hala is also a research assistant in the autonom uh, excuse me, <laughs> autonomous, autonomous vehicle, autonomous vehicle, system. Autonomous vehicle, vehicle system. system. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At the University of Incarnate Word. Um, she earned her bachelor's and master's in applied mathematics from the University of Technology in Baghdad in 2005 and 2008, respectively. She moved to San Antonio, Texas in October of 2015 and has worked as part-time faculty member at St. Fitz College and the University of Incarnate Word in 2016 to 2021. Paula has experience in teaching math and engineering classes for more than 14 years, focusing on algebra, numerical analysis, differential equations, calculus, engineering programming, and engineering analysis. Her research interests are in control theory and machine learning. Paula's ultimate goal is to establish an applied mathematics and engineering research lab and make it accessible for underrepresented students. Welcome engineer Hala Jaber. Thank you. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, we have Dr. Marie Michelle St. Hubert, also known as Mishu. Mishu is currently an associate professor of engineering faculty member within the engineering and mathematics department at St. Philip's College. And she serves as the interim director of the Center of Excellence for Math, also known as COEM. Before obtaining her PhD in medical engineering, biomedical engineering, Dr. St. Hubert graduated from San Antonio College with an associate in applied science and computer electronics technology. She worked as a research and developer engineering technician for a mo mo excuse me, modem manufacturing company and later became the director of manufacturing for a leading video and 3D graphics technology engineering company. She worked in the industry for over 10 years while raising two children before returning to school to obtain her bachelor of science in electrical engineering from the University of Texas at San Antonio in 2006. Mishu received her PhD from the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio Joint Graduate Program in 2013. Her research involved developing smart targeted drug delivery system and controlled drug release using novel LBL nano encapsulation technology. During her academic career, Dr. Mishu has been the Advanced Manufacturing Technology um, Founding 
Program Director, partnering with Toyota, Applied Electrical and Mechanical Department Chair, and the Electrical Program Coordinator. I'm sorry, and the Engineering Program Coordinator. As it's a, a mouthful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> As a faculty fellow, Dr. Sengiver specialized in active learning styles assisted faculty in fostering an engaging cooperative learning classroom environment, student team formation, and kept her post on emerging technologies. More importantly, she sees student mentoring as an opportunity to engage, inspire, and empower students to pursue their educational degrees. She has served as a Federation of American Societies for Experimental Biology, Maximizing Access Research Careers Peer Mentors Network since 2011. As the COEM Director, Saint, Dr. St. Hubert is eager to continue the COEM's goals, which are to increase student enrollment, engagement, and success in STEM. Welcome, Engineer Dr. Marie Michelle St. Hubert. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Okay, um, next slide, please. Now that we have completed the formal introductions, let's get to know these engineers a bit more. The panelists were given five questions to think about and we'll hear the responses now. At the end of this discussion, more information will be shared on how to ask questions of our panelists. So our first question is, as you look back at your life, what was your most positive learning experience and why? If we can, can we please start with uh, Ms. Cotier's response? Great. All right. Thank you, Jessica. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess my most positive learning experience, and it may just be because it's still only a few years out from uh, for me, uh, but was probably working on my master's thesis. Uh, this was really the first time I got to actually get in a lab and run an experiment where I didn't have just a lab manual or any sort of idea of what my results would be. And it was really a very uh, exciting and truly eye-opening experience about in terms of uh, the amount of trial and error involved in just running an experiment on that scale. So uh, yeah, probably about that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead and hear from Ms. Javert. Okay, so um, talking about my, you know, most positive learning experience, actually, um, there is no like only one, you know, like before I'm, I'm sorry, before I talk about my learning experience, I have to, uh, uh, to talk about what I should do uh, 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 to prep myself, like, to learn, you know, uh, uh, prepping myself, it's, First of all, starting with time management. So I supposed to have like a schedule, like for me, this is a reviewing time. This is time for entertaining, this time for my classes. So, and even now when I'm PhD student, uh, I supposed to do this more because I, I'm a mom and I have also uh, two, like two jobs and beside of my classes. So I need also a review time. Uh, so I was doing this time and I stick with it, you know, so with this schedule and I stick with it. Uh, uh, and I also like the second thing I have to be organized, you know, so organizing my notes, organizing, uh, let's say my folders. Uh, so when I come to the review time, I have easy access to the material that I supposed to review. So my learning style or my learning technique is independent, like depends more about understanding, like uh, uh, know the logic behind of it. So I spend uh, much time over the logic more than, you know, doing more problems. So if I will like compare myself with other students, like with other graduate students, they just, you know, they review like from day to night. I, I'm not sure like, like most of my, uh, like the, uh, uh, the students with me, they most of them international students and they come here dedicated just, you know, like for, for studying. I'm not have this time like them. So what I was doing is I was focusing about the logic. So I need to, you know, and, and I developed that, 
you know, that that style when I was uh, undergraduate. So from undergraduate, I developed that concept. Like I need just to understand the logic first and then I will proceed, you know, to, you know, to, to demonstrate that knowledge with the practicing. Uh, so for example, if I want to give example and also for students, for students, when I was like an undergraduate and, uh, and, and, and we start like with method of integration, so the way that I will look at this, I, I'm not just, you know, having sheets to help me to solve the problems. I just like want to understand the link between the differentiation and the integration to be able to, you know, uh, 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 to solve the problems. So just waste this time just to know and understand what's the integration, which is its antiderivative, that will make my life easier than having many sheets just to try to compare which methods uh, 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 solve which. So, uh, 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 and also like, you know, when was in, in undergraduate and even in graduate, the study groups, like the study groups is, you know, it's, it's helped a lot, like sharing, you know, sharing experience between each other, and uh, uh, and also like when when you do lecturing, when you do teaching, like within the, the study group, when I teach my uh, uh, or, or tutor, like being the tutor uh, between the group, that just like I just recall all the knowledge that I have, and I demonstrate it and prove it this way, uh, that I don't need like waste many times just like you know, like review a lot, okay? And, and, and my, let's say, learning experience for me is not the tasks, okay? So it's not just I need to do these tasks to be, you know, to be able to get the knowledge. No, I have to enjoy this experience. And to enjoy it is just like, you need to get the logic first, just to ask yourself why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that. What is the idea behind this method? What is the idea like the system? Now I'm dealing with like control systems. I have to go in depth behind of, you know, of this control systems to be able, you know, to enjoy doing it in a state of, you know, I having tasks and I need these tasks, tasks to be done uh, uh, and make like the, the, the learning, you know, experience be, you know, enjoyable. And it's just like, you know, Stephanie says like, when you work in labs and you will see everything visual, also that helps a lot. And I think in during my masters and, 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 and I was doing a lot of simulation and, and, and just like, okay, so I have this knowledge and now I do this simulation and it gets resolved. And, and once you get the result, like the right result, I was doing approximation. So when my answer, my results be very close to the analytic solution, it's just like a big complex. So, uh, so it's, it's not like, like you will feel like the joy uh, uh, after, you know, after you get the right result. So this is my experience. I just like summarize it for students, you know, to be like more beneficial. You know, I keep also saying that's to my student. Okay, don't try, don't just like do problems without understanding you know, why you are doing this, you know, what is the logic behind of that? So this way you will have time to do many things, not just, you know, uh, uh, studying while you are, you know, in your academic life. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we'll turn it over to Dr. Mishu. Um, my uh, most positive learning experience was um, has to do, unlike the others, when I graduated from with my associates, within a month I was working for uh, Data Race, which was a leading um, motor manufacturing company. And what we did, we made notes for notebooks. So as a technician, I would make and, and test out those, um, those modems and make sure they met specifications. Well, um, my first project was for Apple uh, notebook, an Apple modem. And there was a part called a header that the holes were a little bit too small, but I made it fit and I was able to make the prototypes. So I made the prototypes and then after that, we vet it and it goes to manufacturing. So I celebrated, I was like, yes, great. 
Then my boss, and by the way, I'm the first female and only female that they ever hired because they are no longer there. My boss comes to me and says, did you have problems with the header? With the... And I said, yeah, it didn't fit, but I pushed it in and I, and I made it fit. Well, when we went into production, they didn't fit. Oh no. So I just cost the company millions. Oh my gosh. Right, because we make millions of these. And so that was the lesson that I learned. I learned about tolerance and the importance of tolerance. And that was going to be my job. And so I tell this story to my students. And, and so that was a failure to me, right? I failed. Mm -hmm. But I learned that I need to talk to my team to let them know, or the others in manufacturing, to let them know that this didn't work and we have a problem. I failed to do that. And it wasn't a valuable lesson for me to know that my little part might have a significant impact, which it did. Mm -hmm. So failing sometimes turns out to be the biggest lesson. And a lot of times we don't like to fail. And that's another thing that, that I think is very important. Because particularly for students, and yes, you see that I, it's Dr. So-and-so, but I failed so many times, even as I was going through, because I was told that I shouldn't be an engineer, not only by my family, but by the teachers and such. And so my mindset was, oh, I shouldn't be. And so I fulfilled that. Things didn't change for me until my mindset changed. And I started to see failure in another way. Failure is just a determinant as how much you want something. Because if it's important to you and you want it, you'll do it again. Actually, my granddaughter taught me that because she fell so many times and fell trying to walk. And we forget that that's what we do when we're learning to walk. We fail lots of times. But hers was excessive that I said, stop trying already. <laughs> but she didn't listen to me. She tried again because it was important to her to know how to walk. So failure is just a determinant now of how much you want something. And if you want it, you'll do it because I did, but I had to change my mindset. So it's change of failure, changing of mindset and communication. Those are the important lessons that I learned early in my career and in life. Very good, thank you. Okay, um, yes, thank you. <laughs> I was just about to say next slide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our second question is, what made you decide to major in engineering? And so I'm going to go ahead and start with Dr. Mishu this time. We're going to go in the reverse order. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, people ask me all that, that all the time. Legend has it that I was, that I told my family, and I have to say, my family's from another country. Um, so... Um, I'm the child of immigrants. I was born in New York City. Um, English is not my first language. And so um, <laughs> they tell me all the time that I always knew I was going to be an engineer, right? But so now I, I can't remember a time that I didn't want to be an engineer. So what I come up with, my answer is, um, I just remember God whispering that to me because I don't have any recollection of not wanting to be. They tell me I was crawling around and there was a radio that didn't play, they didn't turn on, but somehow <laughs> your girl made it play. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, that's that's my answer. I, I can't, I, I think it was my purpose. I can't recall 
not mm -hmm. wanting to be an engineer. I don't even know how I learned the word. I can't tell. <laughs> Those are probably the best people, the ones that belong there, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I think it's a purpose. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and Hala, can you share your response? Okay, so um, like my, my background is in applied mathematics. So my bachelor is in applied mathematics and also my master in applied mathematics. But let's say why I make this decision, um, uh, uh, actually I exposed uh, 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 to that uh, in my master's. Okay, so in my master, my master uh, thesis uh, research topic is over uh, optimal control uh, uh, theory. Uh, and, and that kind of a problem, uh, like, um, uh, like make me interested in, to dive in and, and, and dig deep uh, 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 in the control system. Uh, I like it. Uh, I was having like, you know, like one class in my seniors in bachelor called Introduction to Control Theory and another class in my graduate, in my master uh, uh, program, uh, it's called optimal control theory. So I, I start liking it from that time. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when it comes to my research topic, uh, I choose it and, 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 and let's say um, um, the thing that I'm like really like it, it's how you do simulation, you know? So uh, at that time, like I, I was doing that like, you know, in, in, in 2007, 2006, I started doing this. And, and this like, this kind of area was in you in our department at that time. So uh, even other math uh, uh, schools, they offer optimization and optimal control theory and, and, and so on, but they don't do simulation. They're just like, doing it in theory, you know? So uh, this is a problem, get my attention. Uh, and I did my research and, uh, and, and, uh, and I found that, that uh, uh, I wanna apply it. Like I wanna have like real application for it. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I think like if I will go to like engineering schools, so that will give me the chance like more chance if I will go with the engineering schools than department uh, than uh, 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 like mathematics uh, 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 schools uh, to do that. So this is why I choose like my PhD will be in engineering. So I decide that like before, yes, exactly before uh, 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 15 years ago. So if I wanna do my PhD, I wanna do with PhD in, in, in control system. And I keep that dream with me. And when I came here to, uh, uh, to US and, and especially when I start to resume my, you know, my, my old career as a professor <laughs> uh, uh, here in, 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 in St. Phillips and UIW, I keep that dream with me. Uh, uh, and, and, and especially when I had the chance to work with UIW at their research lab uh, under Dr. Fry's lab uh, there. So uh, that, you know, that gave me the good motivation. Yes, I insist to do a PhD in engineering, even though like my life wasn't that easy. I'm a new immigrant, I'm establishing a new life here but uh, uh, I have to do it. I want to do, uh, uh, I want to get this degree to be able to have a research lab because this is my ultimate, you know, my ultimate goal behind of, uh, uh, all of this academic journey. So this is why I want to major in engineering. Very nice. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ms. Cartier. Um, so what made me decide to major in engineering? Um, so actually, I'll, or actually, I uh, started out in in architecture. I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I uh, graduated high school and started uh, my college career. Um, so I kind of had always had an interest in architecture. So I decided to go into the architecture field, um, and I spent about a semester uh, learning that. Um, it was interesting, but I really. I just always had this feeling like something was missing. It didn't, I didn't feel challenged um, in that field, not to knock, uh, knock architecture or anything. I mean, I only made it one semester, but um, 
after that semester, I decided, you know, maybe I should really sit down and try and think about what I want to do and finally like go after that path. Um, and so when I was doing that, I was thinking back, you know, I've always been fascinated with space since I was a kid. I used to be able to name all sorts of information about all nine planets because there were nine planets back then. Um, and I've always really, for the most part, enjoyed math and building things and mechanical engineering kind of checked all those boxes. Uh, I think it offers some unique opportunities that other STEM fields don't necessarily offer in, uh, in terms of it provides the opportunity for you to design and build and create an entire new product or, pro or thing from start to finish. You can go from sketching something out on a napkin and actually holding that object and saying, yeah, I made this and it works and it's in production and people are using it. And that just seemed really enjoyable to me. I, I enjoy uh, having that knowledge that I can contribute to society and making the world a better place. So engineering it is. <laughs> nice. May I just add something, sure. just uh, how I just said certain things and I don't think she knows this, but one at UTSA, there was a, uh, the DARPA challenge when auto, uh, uh, autonomy, the auto, um, um, vehicles, autonomous vehicles. See, you're not the only one struggling. Yes. Um, <laughs> was just coming on the scene and they had, DARPA had this uh, challenge for colleges. Well, I was at UTSA at the time and I was a, I, in IEEE, that's a, an a organization. And so I was on the team to come for the competition for DARPA. And later I went on to work as a graduate assistant for Dr. Jamshidi still oh. there so I was in his lab and you know he's the grandfather of systems of systems yeah that's right so that that's all, that's two things so far that we have in common the third is I went to school with Dr. Fry oh, and so yeah. he's a good friend of mine who is the chair of the department at UIW yeah that's right yeah <laughs> so hey. I've done presentations and stuff for him too so he's a good oh. friend he's a friend of mine Awesome. Okay, I think, oh, there we go. <laughs> Number three just popped up. <laughs> okay, so what has or have been your greatest challenge or challenges in getting your education and how did you overcome that or those challenge or challenges? I'll go ahead and have Stephanie chime in. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jessica. Um, so in terms of my greatest challenges uh, in completing my education, it was, uh, I kind of already mentioned this, that, you know, I really didn't know what I wanted to do when I was starting my college career. Um, I don't really recall my high school holding too many job fairs or career fairs or college fairs. And I know they didn't offer any sort of STEM electives at the time. Of course, now they have like a whole robotics electives course that you can take in coding and all that. But while I was there, we didn't have anything like that. And so I really just kind of felt like I didn't have any direction starting out. And I didn't have any sort of a mentor to help point me in the right direction. Um, and so I actually started out at St. Phillips, uh, just got my associate at St. Phillips, and then I moved on to a four-year university, tried the architecture thing for a semester, and then finally moved to engineering, where I, you know, I finally, uh, finally found my niche, right? But even once I got to the engineering program, I really didn't have any sort of mentor who could tell me, you know, okay, if this is what you want to do, these are the types of courses you need to take. These are the types of uh, exams and certifications that you need to prepare for. I didn't even know that there were things like the fundamentals of engineering exam that I need to take. I didn't know about having to get a professional engineering license or anything like that. I didn't know how to get an internship. I had nobody to really point me in a direction. And so I really was kind of clueless and I ended up spinning my wheels here and there um, and just kind of trying to make my own path and slowly figuring out along the way. And so I guess that was that would probably be my greatest challenge, just having a lack of direction, lack of mentorship 
when early on in my career trying to start out. And how did you overcome those challenges and just slowly? Trial and error. <laughs> it always comes back to trial and error. It doesn't yeah. fail. <laughs> okay. Well, we're glad you made it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. We'll go ahead and hear from um, Hala next. Okay. So, like, I have many challenges, actually, <laughs> for like uh like through my education um you know journey my, my academic education and especially the phd actually like uh during my i'm not saying that i, I was not having this challenging when i was in in, in master program and in, in over an undergraduate program but let's say the responsibility that i was having at that time is what that you know that much because i was young i i wasn't have like you know uh uh, like 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 other responsibilities comparing with now like being a mom and 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 and, and having jobs uh, but let's say I was having like academic you know like academic challenges like with materials with the classes um, let's say even if it's you know like the students they think sometimes this is the hardest one no it's not you can get away with it like it's just like what stephanie says like trial and error so so there is no failing you will just try like when you face the academic challenge but let's say when you have a personal challenge like for me like the 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 time that i decide to pursue my phd so it it, it was like you know it was a terrifying decision at some point like because like I had been here like three years, like in the US uh, and I have two kids and, and I have two jobs and I don't want like to, you know, to quit one job and keep other. No, I want to be with working with both an institution because I, I am in the middle of building my networking. So I don't want to lo lose this opportunity. Uh, 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 with working with these two institutions. Uh, so um, like what I did, for example, like in my PhD, once I decide to uh, pursue the PhD, I lower my classes, my teaching classes. So I make it four classes this way, I will have a, a, a time for reviewing and, and, and so and time for my graduate classes. Uh, 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 other challenge is the kids. So this is the fun part. So I and my husband, we were both having graduate classes. So he was doing his master and I was doing my PhD and we literally was doing this. So the graduate classes, it was after 6 p.m. at UTSA. So what we were doing, we go and pick up the kids. So even me or my husband, we go and pick up the kids and, and we take them with us, uh, yeah, took them uh, to, to the class, you know, they, they, they be in the classroom with us. And, and, and my little, you know, my little son, he was taking notes, you know, and, uh, you know, in the classroom, it was like fun time. Yeah, so, so like those challenges, but let's say you can do compromise, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it depends, you know, uh, the, 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 the ultimate goal again. So after that, yes, I lower my teaching classes and that means I lower my salary for a certain time because I was having a graduate uh, uh, classes that I need to attend. Uh, I need to have more time to, to review, but this is, didn't last like only two years. And then now I'm a full time here. Uh, so I have to do this compromise. You know, I even applied for a student loan because I can manage it uh, financially. So, uh, so I did that, you know, I have to do this compromise uh, to get what I need because this is my dream. And if, if you want to like, you know, I don't want to say like if you want to do it later when you'll be more stable, because sometimes work like things doesn't work like that. You have the chance, you have the motivation now, uh, uh, do it. You know, once you get the decision and try to do it and any other challenges, there will be a solution for it uh, if you worked on it. And to be honest, I and my husband, we, we support each other to you know to work on our the challenges that we 
like that we both faced uh, during our academic journey. Now my, my husband, he finished, now he's like getting good jobs. So he's a stable kind of, so now I am the only one who's having the classes. So I, I think now I am better than before. So it's also like, you know, the time is goes by fast. So, uh, uh, so I know it's like, I faced hard time and over long like time, but it, it, it's just gone. But, you know, I, I work on it, you know, I work on it. Uh, uh, doing compromise is the, let's say, is the right or the perfect solution if you want to have certain goal. But let's say you have to do the priority, which one is like from the most important to the least important, and you will get to figure out it and uh, uh, and do like your achievement. Mm -hmm. So more organizing, right? Yes. And schedules. <laughs> Super yes. Important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am that person. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, can we now hear from um, Dr. Mishu? So um, I've had a couple of challenges. The greatest would be um, moving to San Antonio and having my second child. And six, six months after that, my ex-husband walked out and we were in the military and I was told I had 30 days to move with my two kids. My youngest was six months. My oldest is, was four years old. And I was at UTSA at the time. I was um, taking some classes. Um, and it was devastating. And, but, uh, and we struggled for a long time because I didn't have a skill. I didn't have a job. I was a student, right? And so um, the thing that, that, I did was I learned that after we struggled, I usually tell my, I share my story with my students and I usually tell them I was poor. I couldn't afford the OR. That's how poor we were. It's a great joke. They'll come to <laughs> me. So, um, because I struggled. So the one thing I did was learn that sometimes to go forward, you have to go back. And so that's when I went to Alamo Colleges and I got my degree, my associate's degree. So um, that's how that happened. And it turned out to be the best thing for me because I, after that, within a month of, gra uh, of graduating, I was at Data Race. And after Data Race, it led me to New Tech. New Tech is a manufacturer and, um, uh, Tim Jennison created the video toaster, which is a broadcasting studio in a box. And they moved to, they were from Kansas and they moved to uh, San Antonio, the headquarters here. And so it was on an Amiga platform because of the computers at that time. Windows wasn't compatible, but it got to a point where they were. So uh, I got hired as their manufacturing engineer and I'm also a PCB designer. PCB stands for printed circuit board. So I was the designer for the new video toaster NT um, product. And um, they also, if you go to um, the Spurs games or Alamo Dome, you see the Globotron, it's um, controlled by their TriCaster, which is a product that they have. So, um, I became their director of manufacturing, but after 9-11, um, engineering went dead. A lot of people lost their jobs and were let go, including myself, there was a riff. Um, and so I had some to think of something else to do. So that's when I went back to school. I went back to school in my forties. I know, yes, I did. <laughs> in my 40s. I graduated close to 50. So uh, with my doctorate. And so um, in terms of the, the um, theme of today of healing and hope, I think those two examples fit so well. Because um, the hope for me was faith. Because 
when you don't know where you're going and you got 30 days to move and you got two kids, crumb snatchers is what I called them. And my mother used to live with me also. So um, we moved and we survived. And that was faith. And I think faith and hope go hand in hand. And uh, for me to, after my husband working away and getting to the point where I was able to provide for the kids and stuff with uh, under those circumstances, I think that takes grit. And science has shown that's what we need for students to have is grit for them to succeed. And definitely with new tech where I was let go and then I just pivot, I'm able to pivot and say, I'll do something else. <laughs> and so I went back to school. I went back towards my passion, right? And, um, but for you to do that, you have to get, be able to let go of the hurt and let go of all of that. And I think that's where the healing comes from. And so uh, those are the, my challenges in not only getting an education, right? Um, but also, because it, it hurt me to leave UTSA. It really, really did. I struggled for a couple of years for me to say, nope, I got to do this. And then um, overcoming those challenges. Definitely. Very good. I love your connection to the theme. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Got you. Got you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to our fourth question. And this one is, if you could name one person who had the greatest impact on your life, who would that person be and why? So I will... Um, go ahead and open it to Miss um, Jaber first, and we'll hear from you first. Okay, so like this is a question, actually, you know, I think a lot about this is a question. There is role model, yes, in my life, but but let's say there is a situation that I've been living through that lead me to decide those are my role models, and, and especially in the way that when on the time that where I was searching uh, 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 and searching for myself, like who I am, who, who I want to be. Um, and actually I want like, you know, talk a little bit about my, you know, about my back home and, and about my background. Um, the country, like I live like in Iraq and, and it is like um, crisis zone and war zone country. Uh, uh, and I was living um, in a uh, low-income family, and also I was like, I was raising a low-income family and living in a neighborhood who is within and under the line of uh, uh, poverty. So, so most of those like, you know, like the, like the community that I was living uh, uh, between, they are not believe in education. And especially when it comes to women, you know. Uh, so I was living in that, you know, in, in that community. So the good thing is, like, my father and my mother, um, both of them, they they didn't finish their education. Like, my mother, she was having high school, and my father, even, he didn't, like, finish his middle school. So I, I am the first one, like, uh, like four years university educator uh, uh, in the family. So, um, so they believed in education. You know, even they lived in that community, they believe like the education that probably will change, you know, our destiny, like for me and for my brothers. Uh, so, but the challenge is like, you have this beliefs and, and you know, like our community is very connected and, and it's very easy, like anyone can judge, you know, you know, any other, like, because that connected community, like the neighborhood, like even relatives, my aunts, like anyone has the right, you know, to judge uh, uh, the way that you are living. So it, it, yes, my, my parents, they were not cared that much, but uh, uh, like, I can just say that it, it sometimes like 
uh, affect me sometimes. Like why you are doing this? Why you are, you know, why you are killing yourself and making those degrades? Yeah, I, I was not that person like, like to kill myself like with learning or, or, or with studying. No, I was like enjoying my life, but I love to be successful in my, uh, like in my classes when I was in high school. Uh, but let's say, you know, I know like the, the life that I wasn't living it in, in Iraq, it's not fair only over women and also for men. Like it, it's very like a, a successful life. There is no hope. Most of the people they live there, they just want to make their day alive. So, so this is the, you know, this is the way that like most Iraqi people live uh, at that time. Now it's changed, but let's say, most of people they will live like that, and 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 when a like a young girl has a dream, has ambition, has a faith, just like uh, uh, Misha said, like I I want to change my life. I don't want to live like you know the women around me, like the the the, the way they live that unfair life. There is no hope. There is no dream. No future. Very simple. Like even like they are goals. There is no goals. You know. And was like looking around me, you know, I, I don't want to live like that, you know, I don't want to look like those women, I want to be different. And I believe like, just like my parents with education, I supposed to change that. So, so, so this was like, you know, the spike. So the spike starts from kind of from the community, you know, it's just like I have a revolution inside of me. Uh, I don't want to be like those. I have to be myself first. I want to be independent women. I have to and, and, and invest on me, you know, and uh, before, you know, before what other expectation, you know, like women expectation, like most of the women is facing that even here in, in US, like there is certain expectation that you have to go through. But uh, uh, like in my country, it's more restrict and, and, and there is more limitation uh, uh, with men, women. So the spike starts from this. I don't wanna live like this. I have this revolution among my community. I wanna change my destiny. So when I come to, like, to the college and I faced two role models actually, and both of them were my professors. Uh, one, she was teaching us uh, abstract algebra and the other one, she was teaching us a numerical analysis. And, and then she, later she became uh, 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 my supervisor, my uh, master thesis supervisor. So those were like young women, uh, they were, uh, uh, let's say, they were professors and they were doing PhD at the same time. They having the dreams. They want to be like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, working on, on themselves first. And they don't care about what the community want them to be. Uh, so, and, and, and they make an impact, not just on me, on other girls. So mm -hmm. I get inspired by them and especially uh, my supervisor. My supervisor, she is an exceptional woman, uh, I can say. Uh, uh, like once like the Iraq like becomes open up to the, the, the globe, she starts, you know, because of limitation of resources in Iraq, like Iraq is, you know, is keeping like struggling, like back and forth, like the, so far never like politically is it still considered and is stable. But what she did, she just, you know, she bring like this, uh, like optimal theory uh, uh, to the department and the new way that she present in the department. She also, uh, 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 once the, like Iraq becomes open up, she traveled. She went to Paris to do research. She went to uh, Malaysia to do research. She went to Italy. Uh, she's amazing. And, and, and all the experience that she got from different countries, she brought it to the department. And, and, and she was also married and mom and having two kids. And she did all these achievements. So I really inspired by this woman. And until time, she keep like surprising me. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I want to be, you know, uh, just like her. So no limitation for the dreams, no limitation for the goals. Don't say, you know, I have a family and I have, I have kids. I have to give up now a little bit of my dreams. No, uh, I'm insist more than, uh, 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 more than before. Uh, uh, and, and I keep saying, like, you know, the decision that I make uh, to do 
the PhD is the right decision. And, and, and I don't have to end my dream because I have another responsibilities. No, I have to proceed. Uh, and I hope everyone, and especially girls, you know, uh, uh, they believe in that. Uh, you don't think like women, they are multitask. They can do like impossible things. You can imagine uh, when you be, especially under pressure, you, you don't imagine how powerful you will be. And I discovered that in myself uh, and, and especially during my PhD. Actually, I, you know, I just like surprise myself. Are this all these powers inside of me? And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't no. So uh, yes, those are like the, like the, those two persons and especially my supervisor, Dr. Soha, uh, she is my role model. Very good, very good. Those sound like amazing role models. <laughs> yeah, she's amazing. Yes, she is. <laughs> I can't wait to hear more. <laughs> okay, I'll go next with um, Dr. Mishu this time. Um, so both of my role models are women. Isn't mm -hmm. that interesting? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Um, the first one is my godmother. My godmother um, uh, was the first one that kind of believed in me that and saw that there was something special about me. And um, she was the first female um, student at Queens College uh, in engineering. Wow. So, that inspired me. Um, and my mother, um, I told you my family's from another country, but I didn't tell you what country. My father, my family's from. Oh, I'm sorry. You broke up a little bit. Can you oh, repeat that? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. My family is from Haiti, which okay. is almost like uh, it's, it's, a third world country that it's known that it's the poorest in this hemisphere, but from my family's eyes, that's not how they see Haiti. I'm sure, Hala, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> yes. And so um, she, to me, is a brave woman because in 1961, she decided to leave her family. She had five children, one after the other. And then she had seven that were stillborn. That makes 12. Doctor says she wouldn't have any more. And she left her five to come to the Americas and her husband. And so in 1962, she sponsored my dad. He came and yours truly came in 63. <laughs> so I am naturally number 13 for my mom. And later on, she sponsored my brothers and sisters in two waves. And so they're both 12 to 18 years older than me. So I had seven parents, um, but I, we would go to the airport and that, they would tell me those were my, my brothers and sisters. So I thought that's where siblings came from for a long time. But um, she didn't, my parents like Hala didn't have a, a college education. Um, sixth grade, my mother really couldn't uh, read English, but she taught herself to read. And um, she, it took me a long time to realize they emphasize education. They knew the value of education. I'd be in trouble if I didn't get my homework done. It took me a long time to realize that she couldn't check my work. So I could have, uh, you know, lied, but I didn't do that. I couldn't dare do that. Right. And all of us, all six of us, have uh, gone to college. Uh, my oldest brother is a physician. He's a di diplomat actually in Haiti, um, uh, nurses. So there's all and another that's, well, most of them are in the medical field. I'm the oddball. So she wanted me to be a doctor. She couldn't understand that. She couldn't understand the engineer. So <laughs> my mother had a hard time with me the youngest being an engineer. Interestingly enough, both died of breast cancer. My godmother died when she uh, was 16, so I didn't see her graduate. Graduate. It was after her death that I later found out she wanted to be an engineer. 
And my mother died uh, when I was 34 here in San Antonio. And so my research, that impacted my research. I was in Dr. Agarwal's, uh, um, not Agarwal, I was in his lab as an undergraduate. But during my PhD, I was in Dr. Ong's lab and he's one of the um, senior deans at UTSA for the, uh, for the College of Engineering. And Dr. Appleford is the, also an assistant dean for um, undergraduate programs. I was his second PhD student. And so their lab is primarily a bone lab. But I went to a conference and I heard this guy from MIT talk about nanoparticles. That's what my interest is. And he had this and communications because I'm electrical and communications was my specialty as an undergraduate. And his idea was asinine to me, but he was so, everyone was just loving it that I said, I can do better. So at the conference, Stephanie talked about that experience. I wrote it on a napkin, my idea, because by then I was in a biochemistry lab. And so all of these things came together, had the idea, went to both Dr. Ong and Dr. Appleford that day and said, this is my project. It took a while to convince them for me to do that because again, they were a bone lab and my project had to do with breast cancer and targeted drug delivery. Long story short, I was not allowed to do my proposal without a provisional patent. So there's a patent on my idea. It is truly mine. Um, and it would not happen if it wasn't for these two women. Awesome, awesome. Very nice. So they're, 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 they, they have the greatest impact and I look up to them. Definitely, definitely. Awesome. Okay, I think we still have not heard yet from Stephanie. <laughs> Correct. Your, it's your turn. Um, so the person who's had the greatest impact on my life is probably my mom. She used to tell me when I was a kid uh, about a math teacher she had and how one day he told her, you just can't do math and you should give up. And she kind of said, forget you and went on to get a degree in mathematics and a master's degree in computer science. And she taught college level math for over 30 years. And she used to tell me when she told the story, don't ever let anyone tell you what you can and can't do. Um, and that's always kind of stuck with me. And she's also been very supportive of me throughout my, uh, my education, uh, even in, in that time when, you know, I graduated high school and I didn't know what I wanted to do um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do. I wasn't interested in going to college. And she's the one who encouraged me, well, why don't you enroll at St. Phillips and take some classes and see what you think, you know, and if it doesn't work out, then that's fine. But she was always very patient with me and very encouraging of me. And I think she knew all along that I was meant to be in engineering. Um, and she was very patient and waiting for me to, to finally realize that myself. Definitely. I can see that <laughs> with your mother. <laughs> yeah, only because I know your mother. <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, um, I guess, We'll go ahead and start with Hala for this one. And the question is, it's our last question. So it is, what is your best advice for someone pursuing a major in a STEM field? Okay, so um, first of all, like when you do STEM, like, like you're, you're, you're one a major in a STEM field, you have to be very patient because uh, like that kind of field is a challenging field. Uh, uh, so you have to be very patient and you have to be determined. Uh, 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 determined because with determination, like any challenge will be, you know, will be easy with determined. But if you are that person that you are give up easily, no, it, it, it's gonna be hard for you. So you have to be, uh, uh, you have to be very patient and, and, and you have, you know, um, like 
it's just like I have to like to set the plans all the time. So set the plan, you know, just, you know, if you are doing four, year, four years college, you said, okay, so I will be challenging through only these four years, but at the end, I will be the one that I need to be. Uh, again, when you be patient means you will take like most time to focus on your classes very well. You have to take like the classes seriously and, and, and you have to spend time to demonstrate like the idea and the logic behind of each class uh, uh, to be able to observe the material in the in the good way and to enjoy, you know, enjoy taking those classes. When you don't have that, you know, the fun part, you will just like doing tasks is not going to be easy. Like the journey, the academic journey is not going to be easy. Uh, the other advice I think is just like what uh, Stephanie's mom said, like, don't let anyone told you what you can and can't do. You know, I heard this a lot during my academic life. I heard that, okay, why you are like, why, why you are doing masters? Okay, why you are doing like this? So uh, uh, at the end, you know, because my country, you know, it's, it's, it's still, you know, there is no future, like to be honest. So, okay, so th th this, you know, your, your, your degree you will just hang it on the wall and you will not do anything with it. But, but in the other, like, in fact, I didn't do this. You know, I start working as a professor in my country. Uh, uh, the, the, the politic life change a little bit. The, the employment, like salaries change. Nobody knows at that time, but I was determined that I want to do my master's right away after my bachelor. So I was have this determination, even if there is like, you know, future, but let's say here in US, it's a different story, different case. I know like, you know, um, like the life is kind of hard here, but it's not mission impossible. You know, you, you can do it. So you have, again, patient, determined, not let anyone tell you what to do and what not do and to expose, you know, you have to be exposed to like, STEM experience. And I think like in St. Paulus, they have this STEM, uh, uh, SEMA project, you know, this SEMA project, like the students, they will go and work in, you know, in labs, like in UTSA, in Texas A&M and whatever. So this, this will be good experience for, for students who are thinking of STEM field. They just go and try, you know, and, and, and because I can understand when you be in an undergraduate, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging and, and it's hard to decide which major you want to be. So I think like SEMA project is gonna be the, the good opportunity for the students to take, uh, to be able to be exposed because this is what happened to me. When I exposed to uh, uh, this type of topics, I decide that I want to proceed uh, uh, with, uh, with this kind of, uh, uh, of major. And, and, and overestimate yourself all the time. Don't underestimate yourself, overestimate yourself. Even say, okay, it's impossible to reach. No, you will get it. You just need to work on it and overestimate yourself. Uh, uh, and don't, again, don't listen to anyone let you down or anyone, you know, you know make fun about what you are doing or, you know, like those like neg negative peoples, you know, don't let those negative peoples, you know, control your life. Uh, uh, and especially like girls, you know, like especially girls, because girls, they will be more exposed to this type of people, people who don't have the courage to do what you are doing, people who are afraid, even afraid to do what you are doing, they will try all the time to let you down and, you know, and make everything that you do is nothing and, uh, and all your achievement is nothing. No, don't let that, mm -hmm. though, like those controlling you and, 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 and do what you want to be. Okay. And I don't think it's, it's, it's uh, like something, you know, something hard at all. No, once you will be in it, you will see, it's not that thing that you will visualize it. It's impossible to do, or this, major is for 
one gender, not the other. No, it, it's wrong. It's totally wrong. You know, we have the same brain and we have the, the, the same, you know, like biologically we have the same brain. So it, it, it doesn't relate it with gender. Uh, it, it's related with working hard and determination and, 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 and everything will be easy, I think. Very good, thank you. Definitely work hard, right? <laughs> that is yeah. the key. <laughs> yeah, I, I enjoy it. I don't know, but I really enjoy it. Like, especially when you do something you like, you know. And that is very Something important. you're passionate. You will not feel it, it's, 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 it's that hard actually. Mm -hmm. uh, um, no, you, you will enjoy doing it. You mm -hmm. know, like being busy with, with something is viable, you know, so. So this is what this is what I feel. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, can we hear from Stephanie next? Sure. Um, so my advice for anyone going uh, or pursuing a STEM major would be just don't be discouraged by the path that you have ahead of you. Like Paula was saying, it's it is a difficult path to go down. Uh, you will have to do put in a lot of work, a lot of effort. And especially when you're starting out and you're looking at how much you have to do, it can be very daunting. And just don't be discouraged by that. Um, my dad used to always tell me that, yeah, it's going to take you four years to get this degree, but that four years is going to pass regardless. That's it's fine. up to you to figure out how to make the best use of that time. And so you can, yeah, do something that's quick and easy, or you can really apply yourself and build something that's going to last you a lifetime that you're going to get so much fulfillment out of. And also don't be afraid to make mistakes. I mean, if you spin your wheels here and there, like I did, it's, it's okay. That's part of life. There are twists and turns on the path to life. Just don't be afraid to make those mistakes. That's how we learn. Always look for new opportunities to learn and grow, right? Always say yes to as many experiences as you possibly can, because that's you know, even if it doesn't contribute directly to what you think you want to do with your degree, you may find something else that you really do enjoy. You may find something, another uh, route that you want to go down instead or in conjunction with what you were starting out with. So just don't get discouraged always and don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah, good advice. I always tell my students, you're in the wrong field <laughs> if you have a problem with solving problems, because that is an engineer's job to solve everybody's yes. problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and hear from Dr. Mishu. So there are uh, things that I mentioned before, such as grit. You have to have grit. It's going to be, it's part of the course, grit. You got to have grit. Um, remember that failure is not the end, it's just a determinant. Do you really want this or not? It's, it's just an indicator of your path, how you define your path. Um, don't do it for money, because as the others have said, it's hard. We put in a lot of hours. Uh, we don't hang out at, we don't hang out during rush week and do all those things. We're either in the library, we're together, and we're studying, we leave at two o'clock in the morning with our friends who are other engineers. We do not have a life when we're pursuing that, right? So understand, it's, it, that's the life that, that's the, you see them shaking their hands, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that, that's what it is. You gotta love it or like it because you can't, you, you won't last long in industry if you're doing it just for money. Um, I got paid to 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 play because I enjoy doing it. So do it because you like it, not pursue it of money. And the last is um, studies have shown that women have in STEM have this imposter syndrome. So I have one of the quotes that I truly truly love, and that's one of the things I would like to impart you leave you with. It's from Marianne Williamson, and it talks about fear. Sometimes we have fear. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, 
talented, fabulous. Actually, actually, who are you not to be? You are a child, and I'll say you're God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifestation the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And so let your own light shine. We unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. That's, that's all I have. That's beautiful. That's wow. very inspiring. Okay, well, this does conclude the first part of this event. So we do ask that all viewers, if you have any questions, um, for any of our panelists or even a specific panelist, um, you can go to this website that you see on the screen. You can even use your cell phone to take a picture of the QR code, which will also automatically open up the website. Um, in the form, we'll ask you some basic questions like your name, what is your field of interest? And then if you have a question for a general question for all panelists or for a specific panelist. And then you can carry on and type in your questions. Um, we will be collecting these questions from um, March 1st until March 22nd. And then we will collect all of those questions and then re record a second part of this STEM lecture series with our same lovely panelists. So, um, this is all I have for you guys today. Um, I do want to take a moment really quick <laughs> to thank each of our panelists for contributing to this discussion today. Um, not only have I witnessed you guys having some similar stories to each other, but as you guys were talking, I also shared some of the similarities in my story with you guys as well. Um, so that was very interesting to hear, even specifically just for me. Um, but do I do thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to chat with us. We really appreciate it. Um, we do look forward to the viewers' questions, and then we also look forward to hearing your guys' responses to those questions. Um, before I leave you guys today, I do want to take one moment <laughs> to say thanks to my co-coordinator of this event is Matthew Hudock. <laughs> He's been in the background <laughs> controlling our slides, so yay, thank you for that. <laughs> But I wish you all a great day and I will, we will be seeing you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Definitely. I was muted. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.